minute, wait a minute, okay, not too many. I'm having a good old crawfish boil with some egg. And a sparkling ice and some fried green tomatoes. Country. So, uh, this will be today, something else week Sunday, but we kind of lax today. Excuse my allergies, they're acting up so bad. I'm sneezing all through church today. Anyways, um, I used to peel these and then put them back in the uh, seafood boils water so the eggshell can, I mean, uh, uh, egg itself can get some flavor, but I was hungry today. I don't even worry about it. But, um, So what I wanted to talk to y'all about is just my goals for this channel and a message I wanted to share with you all. So. Friday I had to make this video that was going to be for Fitness Friday about like my fitness goals and kind of what I've been up to. But my phone died. I was on my way to work when I was making the video. And I didn't get into you, but... I'll insert some of that right now. Hello, guys and gals. Sorry, I have been away. Not that anybody has really noticed. But, um, I did my hair. Yay, it's crochet. But, anywho, um, did not do the Southern Bell Speak Sunday this week. And, um, Fitness Friday is kind of a dub because um, I haven't been in the gym as much this week. I did go to the gym uh, once this week, but I didn't record it because I was quickly going before work. However, I wanted to talk to you guys for this Fitness Friday. Right now, I'm at a place where I've lost about 60 pounds and um, I am more into toning and strengthening and I'm still, you know, wanting to lose fat and weight loss and everything, but I'm slowing down in that area, getting closer to my goal weight. So I've actually started running, which <laughs> that's uh, cardio. So I just said I wanted to get more into strengthening and toning, but I kind of just took like a week. I was like, I don't feel like going to the gym, which a lot of times I don't, but I push myself, but I just did not push myself, you know? But I said, I'm not gonna let that week turn into two, or, you know, I'm not gonna be inactive completely. Um, luckily for me, I still do walk and catch the bus to work, so um, I had to do that and be active, I'm on my feet all day at work anyway. But, um, and I stuck to my diet throughout that week and I actually lost three pounds. Um, I'm still cutting. So, um, I didn't gain. You'll be fine. 
it's just when you let that week turn into two and then a month and then you know six months but and this week i'm feeling like really good uh, i just started taking uh, amazing greens just making sure i get fiber and my greens in for the day and um i've been eating a lot more like chia seeds and flax seeds and stuff like that in the morning doing a lot more green smoothies and i feel like really good especially today i got up i went for a run i'm just kind of focusing on my inner wealth because i want to i want to like figure out what it is that i want to do with my body moving forward um, I think for the past nine months, it's been lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, weight loss goal. And I've just been doing everything I can. And now I'm more so trying to slow down and just enjoy my body and figure out what works well with my body. So now that you've heard that, Adding to that, um, I'm going to be adding some things to my channel. I've got a new intro and outro coming. Like I said in the video, I took a little bit of break. And... I was talking about how, as far as fitness, I've been focusing on finding, like, what's best for me, what I want out of, like, my fitness, really focusing on centering my body. And, like, figuring out what my fitness goals are next. Being that I'm getting closer to my goal and weight. But, I also am working on the spiritual sense of my fitness and health. So, this channel, I say, is like... The health and wellness channel focusing on physical health but also spiritual health which is why I do the Southern Bell Speak Sundays and so I wouldn't be true to myself if I didn't try to hone in on that with myself and it's you know, you always need to, like, center yourself and take a step back and reassess what your body and your mind and your spirit needs. And so, as in the video, I was talking about, like, um, figure out what my body wants and where I'm going with that. And I had, like, started the, you know, red, running regimen or whatever. But, spiritually, figuring out what, you know, works best for me to do. I've been doing things like uh, scripting, uh, law of attraction type things. If you want to know more about that, um, I can talk about that in another video. If you're not familiar, but things like that. Um sage burning I got these I've had them for a while but my waist beads that have different crystals on them to um, to bring forth different things that within me and bring me closer to certain things now Crystals and sage are 
controversial to some people. But I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I think it all depends on your intention. And you set your intention when you do these sorts of things. Say it loud. I put a hot sauce on you. I like to dip in my branch, but I'm at my parents' house and they don't have good ranch. Um so I've really just been focusing on setting my intentions within my spirit and really trying to hone in on what it what makes my spirit happy. So with that being said, um, we'll get into more of that uh, as my channel progresses. Um, today's message is more about just loving one another. And in the Bible, God called, well, Jesus called his disciples to basically finish his mission um, before he ascended into heaven after he had rose. And it's in Luke chapter 24, if you want to read uh, at the very end. And he basically told them they had to finish his works and they had to, you know, be able to finish what he started and, um, Continue his legacy, do what they were called to do by God, bring others to Christ, that type of thing. But not until they were equipped with the Holy Spirit. And I also was reading this poem, and it was about. I don't know if it was about like a lover, a loved one, or just us as humans together, which is how I took it. But I guess it could be taken any way you'll mean it. But it basically talked about like loving somebody and painting like a rainbow of love and joy and happiness and painting it into like the window of their soul or something like that. I'm not saying it right for verbatim, but the gist of it was they wanted to be able to paint just like basically give them joy and happiness and speak to their soul. But it said God didn't promise that I could make rainbows. He only promised that I could love you. And then it went on to say that God didn't promise that 
I could suffer on your behalf. He only promised that I could love you. And I thought that that was profound only because we spend so much time as Christians trying to bring people to Christ that oftentimes it causes us suffering. And that poem just said, you know, God didn't promise that I would suffer because in all actuality, Jesus died on the cross for all of us. So there's no need for any of us to suffer for one another. All we're to do is love one another. And, you know, when the poem said he didn't promise that I could make rainbows, I kind of thought that might have been referring to uh, the promise that God gave us that he would never leave us nor forsake us again. And he used the rainbow as the covenant, the promise of that. And so... I thought maybe since the poem used the word rainbow, it might have been what they were referring to. And so, we can't promise each other things that God can promise. Sorry if y'all can't hear me. Um... We can't suffer for one another the way that Jesus suffered for us. There's no need. All we're to do is love one another. So with your partner, there's no need for you to suffer trying to bring them to Christ. Because, you know, God's already done that. There's no need for you to, you know, promise to make them happier, be their happiness, paint a, rain a rainbow into the window pane of their soul. God only promised that I could love you. And so that's why. I don't necessarily try to push my religion on other people because God, that's not what he made us for. I'm to love somebody, an unbeliever, despite their unbelief and bring them to Christ that way. And if they don't believe, I'm not just staying and suffer and pay for their sins. Because Jesus has already done that. He died for our sin. Excuse me. Before we sinned. Knowing we are going to sin again. Over and over. And so when we go out and we evangelize and we try to bring people and they don't receive it, we're not to suffer on their behalf. We're not to judge them and be judged back. We're not to try to you know, change their happiness. We're only there to love. And I think that's what we should try more of instead of judging. You know, there's some Christians that give other Christians a bad name 
So then, when we come along, someone's already got their mind made up about what's going on. And you've kind of turned them away from being open to that idea of Christ. Because instead of just loving them, which is what God wanted us to do. Because when he told the people what they were to do, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until they are fully equipped with the Holy Spirit. So, when a Christian is not equipped with the Holy Spirit, and they go off and try to evangelize, if they're not fully equipped with the Holy Spirit, they're going off on their own goal, on their own agenda on their own itinerary and that's when things get messed up that's when they prejudge that's when they don't say things out of love and that's when their duty isn't fulfilled and that's when they suffer and in the poem, it said, God didn't promise that I would suffer. He only promised that I could love you. And that's really all we're to do. Love one another. And that's why you don't find me speaking on a lot of controversial stuff on my channel. Because a lot of Christians... They don't get it. And they're going off on their own mind, judging. At least they be judged. And they're not going out of love. I love. people of the world and that's all I'm supposed to do God will take care of the rest if somebody isn't right and they're not doing right it isn't my duty to chastise them that's God's job it's my job to love them to love them enough that they may know Jesus the way that I know him. And if they receive, the transformation will happen. We as Christians have to learn that. Have to learn not to go out and evangelize until we're fully equipped. And we're speaking not as ourselves, but as Christ-like Christians. So, if anybody has anything to say about that, I'm going to open up my comment section for thoughts and opinions. We're all friends here. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with a friend if you don't mind. Look out for up and coming changes to my channel. And as I grow... You guys will grow, hopefully, and I hope you guys are happy to see more of me. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to become a bell. I'm Southern Bell from the City, and thanks for watching.